computer. That's a new feature they added to that. Okay, we have one more minute. Oh, we have to consent to be recorded. See, that's a new feature. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. I'd like for you to put in the chat where you're from. It'd be fun to hear what grade you teach or the settings you teach in as well. Um, it'll help me to tailor the presentation. Second grade teacher. First grade. Kindergarten. Oh, we have a principal. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Awesome. This is great. One of the schools I used to consult in is on Hopton. That's great. Hi, Amy. All right, folks, thank you for coming. We're going to get started tonight. It is raining here. I am on emergency power. So um, my husband set me up in my office. So this is, it looks like nothing's wrong, but it really is. <laughs> But we're going to wing it. We're going to be just fine. So we're here tonight with Denise Eide. <laughs> and she, um, it's been a pleasure working with her for the past six months. Um, she's got some incredible training that she has been sharing with us. And um, tonight is her night to talk about her um, curriculum called Foundations of the Logic of English. Is that correct? Yeah, Logic of English Foundation. There you go. I transposed it. Um, and Denise um, decided that she was going to start writing curriculum when her own kids um, were having struggles with reading. And so um, I think that's not an unusual story, but your story is unusual, Denise, because your curriculum has just, um, you know, gone around the world. So it's, it's really wonderful. And we're so honored to have you here and to show us everything that you have. So without further ado. Well, thank you. Thank you, Donna. It's really exciting to be here. And I just want everyone to know I have never showed curriculum through Zoom before. So I'm going to use kind of a combination and show you the overview by letting you see a few printed items to show you that those exist. And then I'm going to switch over to our e-learning site where all of this is also available and hopefully show you some samples. So Foundations uh, is written for ages um, four through about seven or eight. So it can be is used in some pre-K programs, use Foundations A. There are four levels to it, Foundations A, B, C, and D. And we'll be exploring what's taught in each of those in just a little bit. But um, the most typical path for Foundations is that Foundations A and B are often taught in kindergartens. And then foundation C and D in first grade. So if you work with a school too, our school consulting team is really excellent at helping to place students uh, appropriately based on your school's needs. So what I want to do is share my screen. Oh, and you know what? We didn't do that. Here you go. Hang on. I'm going to give you, we were chit-chatting this whole time and we didn't do that. Hang on. So as I do that, I will just let you know that um, someone mentioned uh, Doodling Dragon. So there's some children's books that go along with it. And each of the programs has printed teacher's guides. Um, they have workbooks. We have phonogram flashcards uh, to learn the phonograms and their sounds. We have tactile cards where you can feel the sandpaper for teaching handwriting. And again, I'll kind of get more into all of these components. There's readers that go with each of the levels. So I'll explore those with you though in the online format, knowing that they're all here in print next to me too. And I'll try to hold them up in the little box. Okay, you should be good to go. Excellent. So 
Oh, you guys get so tiny now. That's so sad. But <laughs> I always like seeing everybody. So where I'm at at the moment is on our web store. And the reason I did that is there's really nice images for you to see. And I wanted you to be able to just get a sense of what is in the set. And then I'm going to flip over to our e-learning site. So there are four sets. There's Foundation A, Foundation B, and you can start also in Foundation B. There's a Foundation C set and Foundation D. There are only two starting points to the program, and that's Foundation A or B. And I'll explain a little bit more as to why that is as we tour the program. So in these sets, I'm just gonna click in so you can see the printed set. Um, Foundation teaches uh, integrated approach to language arts. So we cover phonemic awareness, systematic phonics, uh, vocabulary, fluency, reading comprehension, and we integrate in handwriting. And if you've taught, if you've taught any of the science or reading presentations, we integrate in handwriting because it's part of the kinesthetic um, learning of the phonograms and their sounds. And it's also an essential part of learning to write. And we integrate in grammar. So when you get the starter kits, there are reference charts like this phonogram and spelling rule reference chart. There are phonogram tiles, which are little student tiles. And if you're working in a school, you'll have these with groups of two or three um, students. There are game cards, which can be used to play games, again, in small groups. And then there are tactile cards. And there's a set of books. So let's hop over to the e-learning site. Whoops to the e-learning site. And I'm gonna show you where some of this is on the website. So if you are looking it up yourself, you'll be able to see it. So I'm gonna to go to elearning.logicandenglish.com. And if you go under the curriculum tab, you'll see it says foundation. Foundations is one of our product lines. The other is essentials for students ages eight all the way to adults. And foundations as a curriculum has physical sets, which is what I have sitting next to me. There's a whole bunch of books sitting next to me of these sets, which are, I showed you in the web store. Foundations Online, which is a current course in progress of development. And the great thing about Foundations Online is it includes PDFs of absolutely everything you get in the physical sets, which is why I'm gonna show it to you from there. And I will also be talking about Foundations Lite, which is a free course, which teaches phonograms and spelling analysis. So this is free and I will show you what that looks like. And you can use that right away in a classroom to teach spelling. And then eventually we will have student courses. Those are coming actually in November or December of 2020, actually in uh, the winter of 2022. So a little bit later this year. So once again, Foundation has four volumes and this is an integrated language arts program. And the way I like to think about it is we teach all of these skills of language arts in one program so that they reinforce one another. Um, many people have talked to me about, and I used to experience this as a teacher, where your spelling program actually teaches a different set of rules than your phonics program, and your grammar program teaches it even yet a little bit differently. And the thing is, is we're teaching the same language. We're teaching English. So Foundation A Light, like I said, I will click into here and you can um, get this for free, um, is a program where you can learn uh, by video. Actually, I'm gonna click um, down a lesson here. So let's pick a lesson here, where you can learn new phonograms by video. The instruction will be there, what it's they time. say, what they say, and all the instruction is there. And then once you get past lesson 21, there's spelling analysis. And I'm gonna zoom scrub this ahead, it, um, it, where we analyze the words. Wait, um, wow, wait. that's quite a face I've got there. <laughs> where we analyze the spelling of words. And these are very simple words because they're in foundation A. But again, it can be a spelling program for you. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to pick out lesson 30 in foundations. And I'm sorry, I'm clicking through. I'm hoping this is the best way. I want a lot of directions trying to figure out how I was gonna show you pages smoothly. Right, we're oh, we're only seeing the original um, screenshot that you had of the things to purchase. We're not seeing the slides that you're clicking through. Oh, you're kidding. 
Nope, I'm not seeing it either. All right, let me stop sharing. And let me make sure that I get the right thing. I'm so sorry. All right, if that happens again, let me know. All right, do you see Foundation A online here? Yes. All right, well, that's interesting. All right, if that happens again, let me know right away because I'm gonna click into this course. Hi, I'm Denise I need Hi. to stop, please. I'm sorry. So Foundation A, on this on this course page, you can see some of what's taught. So what's taught in Foundations A are all of the sounds for A through Z. The students also learn how to read and how to spell CVC words and words with consonant blends. So a very simple way to know if a student is ready uh, or needs to do Foundations A is to actually ask them, can they spell the word stomp? So can they also spell the words with these consonant blends? Because the students coming out of Foundations A have mastery of those uh, that level of words of spelling. And one of the things we've seen again and again in schools um, is parents whose kindergartners are in Foundations A telling us that their kids hear the vowel sounds and they spell these words better than some of their kids in second grade. Because the phonemic awareness skills and everything come together for them and they know the sounds. So that's just a simple way to evaluate um, some of the mastery. So the online courses include videos and spelling analysis. The book does as well. And we include a lot of games and handwriting instructions. So in Foundation A, students will learn lowercase letters. So in the online course, and by the way, the online courses are only $74.99 at this point um, for teachers um, access. Um, I'm gonna show you what a lesson looks like, and then I'll help you understand how this relates to a printed lesson. Um, so when you go into a lesson, is it transitioning with me? Are you able to see the teacher's guide now? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so in lesson, I'm actually going to go into lesson 30 here. When you enter a lesson, um, you're able to see the teacher's guide. So that's the same as this hardcover printed book. And at the beginning of each lesson, you have the skills listed that are your objectives. So in this lesson, um, in lesson 30, students will be learning how to identify the medial vowel sound in words. They'll also be learning to blend two and three letter consonants in isolation. So it'll step through which skills you're teaching. And again, I jumped all the way to lesson 30 to try to show you something closer to the end of the book. They'll also learn how to write lowercase l. Now, one of the unique things about Foundation's teacher's guides is that these teacher's guides include instruction for both manuscripts and cursive. The workbooks, though, come in either manuscript or cursive. So that's a handwriting style that you'll need to choose. So there'll be a section of systematic phonics. These are scripted, and that helps teachers who are unfamiliar with phonics to know exactly what to teach. Uh, there can be also be an inspiration. There are callouts with extra ideas of how you could maybe have an L day. We also reference a page in Doodling Dragons. So, and I'll show you this book in a minute, but where they read a page from the book. And here's just an example with the handwriting instruction. When they're learning the sound, they're also going to learn to write it. And here you'll see that there's instructions for how to teach in cursive or how to teach in manuscript. We don't recommend you teach both, but the instructions are there so that you as the teacher choose or the school chooses which style you're doing. Then there's a phonemic awareness activity that you're teaching in this lesson. And there may be even more phonics activities. One of the interesting, unique aspects too about Logic of English curriculum, including um, foundation, is there are often games uh, that can be used in a large group as well as in individual instruction. And so kids really enjoy the games. We also teach you spelling analysis. So if you were part of our systematic um, uh, phonics course, I did some demonstrations of spelling analysis. 
where we sound out words, qua, i, ul, t, the student sound them out, and then they write them, and then I write them, or the teacher writes them on the whiteboard. And again, I'll show you this in a video in just a minute. And then they analyze them. And there's always a lot of support for teachers in this program where there's any questions a teacher might have. So it helps to model it, and it also provides a lot of teacher tips for teachers who are um, going uh, through the program. In addition, there's a spelling a section, and then in this case, there's a reader. So let me go ahead and show you some of the workbook pages. So on the left side, if you buy the online program, you'll notice that you get both the cursive and the manuscript workbook in the online program. So I'm gonna show you the manuscript. And if you buy these in print, you have to choose. Does that make sense? They're printed in two different workbooks, so you have to choose which one you're using. Um, then in, um, in the Foundations A program right I'm, now, there are also activities. This is an activity where um, they will have to choose and click on the correct medial vowel in a word. You'll notice that this is relating to the skill that was being taught in the teacher's manual. We are working on creating videos for absolutely all of the content as well. And the interesting thing about the foundations program is these videos teach the same content as in the teacher's manual, but using slightly different words. I didn't use the script. If we're using example words, I used different sample words. So you can use this with a substitute teacher if they're not present or if your classroom teacher is not there that day, or students could watch it on their iPads for supplemental instruction. You can imagine there's a lot of ways then to reinforce instruction with this. We also practice the flashcards. They're there on video. Um, I was gonna show you in Doodling Dragons, one of the unique things too about Logic of English is that we have this children's book that is phonetically accurate. So there is a book and this you can purchase alone too, where it just has the sounds of the phonograms and some text. We also have songs. And in the online version, we've combined those. So I'm gonna give you a little sample of that. One, two, L says two. Can you hear it? La, 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 yes. La, 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 so that gives you a little taste. There's a song. The songs also are available um, as a standalone product. Everything you're seeing here, you could buy individually as well. So if you just wanted to use Doodling Dragons in the songs. And something that just came out, uh, which is not yet in the online course, is we also have coloring books for the phonogram. So they parallel what you're seeing here with the Doodling Dragons book. Now we have a Doodling Dragons coloring book as well. So I'm very excited about those. In addition, in the online program, we also have video instruction. Well, they are for how to teach uh, the handwriting for each letter. So this is teaching how to write O, and I can scrub ahead a little bit. It's using the tactile cards and demonstrating that, and then it's demonstrating it on a whiteboard. So that is an option to show if you want. But again, the teacher's guide also includes how to do that. This is modeling it. And online includes both cursive and manuscript. In addition, the online courses have some interactive activities uh, that are mirroring some of the activities in the workbook where you can drag and drop and do various activities. Um, I think here's a medial vowel one where you have to type in the right answer. Now, one of the most challenging aspects we find for new teachers is teaching spelling analysis. And I've done some pilot programs in school districts where I found that when we videoed spelling analysis, teachers often showed the videos to the students. And I would find that the teachers actually observed because they were learning how the language worked as well. So these spelling analysis videos are what are available. Yeah. Oops, sorry. These spelling analysis videos, I'm trying to give you an example, are what are available um, for free in the light courses. So if you're not sure if you want to uh, adopt the entire program, you could try out just spelling analysis for free in a classroom. And finally, in Foundations A, I want to give you a sense of the readers. Now, Foundations A is unique with the readers because the readers exist 
in the back of the student workbook. And the readers in this case have no pictures in them. Mm. This would be something you would need to print off or you could, you can see they're sideways. So they're gonna get folded and they come with pictures. I'll show you here that the students cut up and glue into place. Why do we do that in Foundations A? Well, we want children to be decoding the words rat and dog, we don't want them guessing. And when they're creating their own readers, they can't rely on the pictures to guess what that page says. They have to actually read it and then create their own readers. We've had really fabulous feedback about um, students loving creating their own readers for Foundation A. And then the online courses include additional comprehension activities that are much like the workbook. Now go up one last time to the student workbook and just page through this. So again, this is what a printed workbook would be like. Um, and these are the PDFs of it. So you can just get a little sample here. They're circling the middle vowel of a word. The workbooks, by the way, are not standalone. You must have the teacher's manual because that's where the directions are. Finally, each of the courses does include assessments. And at this time, the assessments are all like you would find them um, in the printed teacher's guide. So we um, identify two different levels of mastery. Uh, level one means the student should have mastered this material. Level two means it's new and they're working on it. And so we give the skills that they're learning and the level of mastery that we're aiming for. And this is a place where I foresee the online programs will be really helpful because if a student, when you go through this assessment, has not mastered an area um, that, that they, by that time, ideally would have, you could use some of the online practice to supplement as well more independently. So it assesses each of the skill areas that we have been, um, that you have been teaching. So that is Foundations A. And once again, students at the end of Foundations A can read and spell words um, with consonant blends and short vowels. Hi, I'd like to I'm now oops, take you to Foundation B and see how the students are growing as they continue Foundation B. So the second starting place Hi. for students is Foundation B. And the reason that students can't begin in Foundation C is that even teachers who have master's degrees in reading say that when they go through Foundation C, they learn new things about English. <laughs> and that, was, that is certainly true for almost everyone. One of the most important concepts that's taught very, very early in Foundations B is schwa. And it's taught in a very um, young student-friendly way where we talk about lazy vowels and it's very easy for them to understand. And schwa is the most common sound in the English language. So understanding that schwa is a lazy sound is really helpful. It helps us to read even words the and uh, which are two of the most common words in the language. So on this page, you'll be able to see that they review all the sounds of A to Z. So the systematic phonics is extremely robust and very accurate. And they learn 21 new multi-letter phonograms. For handwriting, they review the lowercase letters and then they learn how to write all of the uppercase letters. And in this program, we have a book called Whistling Whales, which is much like Doodling Dragon, which um, I'm getting piles of books around me, but Whistling Whales shows multi-letter phonograms. And I'll show you an example of it in a moment. So uh, here's the placement test, by the way, if you're wondering if they should start in A or B, there's a download for the placement test. So for Foundations B, um, when you buy the online course, by the way, you get to download the basic phonogram cards, cutouts of the tiles. So you would have to cut them out if you used it this way, um, or we sell them in printed versions. But I'm gonna go ahead and once again, hop towards the end of the program. Uh, maybe I'll just jump in here um, to just give you a sense of uh, what this looks like and what a Foundation B student is able to do towards the end of the program. So Foundation B, once again, all of the skills are listed at the top. In this 
uh, lesson, they're learning that OW says ow, o. Oh. There's handwriting practice, spelling analysis. These are the words that they're analyzing how to spell. So notice now they can spell cow, snow, tell, corn, and hatch. So those are the words that they're learning and they'll know why. That's one of the unique things about logic in English too. Students know why words are read and spelled the way they are. They'll be working on comprehension and fluency skills, such as identifying the title, making predictions, recalling facts, identifying how a character feels. You'll see that the skills are becoming more complex and they'll be working on identifying opposites in vocabulary. So once again, the lessons look very similar. They're scripted to support teachers who are new to this concept. Literally, I've seen teachers read it <laughs> as they present it and it goes very, very well. Um, the lessons get a little bit longer in Foundation C because students have um, more background. Here they're learning about phonograms with multiple sounds because this says ow, o. Oh. There's activities, there's games. Um, I've seen, uh, I have videos of classrooms playing snatch the phonogram and students just being so excited to play this game to practice the phonograms. This is that spelling analysis section, vocabulary, and then comprehension and fluency. And I'm going to show you that we have comprehension that is both in readers, such as this, but also activities. So let's just take a little look at the student workbook. Once again, the student workbook comes in both, whoops, cursive and a PDF format. So in Foundation C, if you're buying printed workbooks, you need to choose which style you're buying. Um, but in the online program, you get PDFs for both. We have a lot of focus in all of foundations on high frequency words, and there's a lot of games. So this is a list of our words to practice um, mastering those and some game cards. There's a game in the teacher's guide. There are matching activities uh, for reading comprehension. Lots more reading comprehension at this level. Here they're practicing identifying opposites. The, there's more about it in the teacher's guide. And this I wanted to show you. Um, I think one of the things I'm really excited about about foundations is the creativity we've put into reading comprehension. So this is a story about a sheep. And there are all these sheep that the students cut out and they put in order of what the sheep did that day. So another way to practice reading comprehension and their, develop their fluency skills. This particular lesson also has a reader and the um, the teacher's guide has uh, reading comprehension activities that go along with Gwen gives a gift. But this gives you an example of what Gwen gives a gift looks like. These readers are also printed. You can buy them already printed where you can, they're stapled and in the classroom. There are 16, I believe, readers for Foundation B that are all printed. Um, and these are controlled. One of the unique things, again, about Logic of English is we never ask a student to read a word that we've not taught them why it's read and spelled that way. So when you read this sentence, these sentences, Gwen wants to give mom a gift, she will make a card, she starts with a bright blue star, every single one of those words is decodable. Isn't that amazing? They have learned the skills to decode every one of those words. Nothing in there is a guess. So that is one of the strengths of the foundations program. Even the word to and of, we've systematically taught them how and why words are spelled. So this is just a little example of what this reader looks like. And again, these are completely decodable for a student who's done all these lessons. I'll go back up to Whistling Whales here, that's part of the lesson, and give you a little taste of this. Says ow, oh, oh, double you says ow, oh, do you know? So, again, there's the songs you can stream them on all the major streaming channels. So, you could go out tonight, and if you have Apple Music, it's on there. If you have um, Pandora, it's on there. And once again, we have new coloring books for Whistling Whales as well. So, all of these components are individual as well as together. And just like in the Foundations A course, you'll see that there are activities that we have been building out. And there are videos um, 
instructing the phonogram flash of the phonogram sounds. So if you're confused as to how to teach that, there's videos teaching the spelling. It's time analysis. for spelling. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and show you that they're underlining the ow and cow. They're putting an O over the O and snow because ow, O said its second sound. So they're practicing how and why this relates to the information they're reading through spelling analysis. So are we ready to go on to foundation? Oh, and there are assessments in the same way uh, with foundation C. Um, and they look exactly the same. These are the skills, the level of mastery, and then how to assess them in their student workbook pages about that. Any questions about foundations A and B before we turn to foundations C and D? And you can type them in the chat box. And I... Hi, I'm... We good to go? All right, then I'm gonna go... Oh, wait oh, a minute. Ahead. No, nothing yet. Okay, perfect. Well, then I think that I must be making this fairly clear. So once again, Foundations B also has a free light course. You can sign up for this. And all of the phonogram and spelling analysis instruction that I showed you is integrated into Foundation B Teacher's Guide is for free here. So you can use that as a spelling course if you would like. And then Foundation C has a light course as well. Again, phonograms and spelling rules. But let's go ahead and look at what a Foundation C course looks like. Now, Hi. I, I really, really love Foundation C. Um, students by Foundation C are making a huge leap in their reading skills. And by the end of Foundation C, they know all 75 of the basic phonograms. That's a huge milestone for them. And like I said, a majority of our schools teach foundations A and B in first grade, and then C, I'm sorry, A and B in kindergarten and C and D in first grade. So when they know all their phon basic phonograms, they really take off and are able to read anything. Another thing that I am super excited about with Foundation C is the Miles and Jack book. These are, early chapter books, and I'm gonna show you uh, an example of this, that are 100% controlled readers if you're going through foundation. And I, again, I'm gonna show this to you um, with some samples. We also have uh, with foundation, see the book Knitting Nights, which teaches the last of the multi-letter phonograms. And again, in that same format. Um, these Doodling Dragons, Whistling Whales, Knitting Nights books, though, are great for any age. We have a lot of kids who um, enjoy them younger. All right, so for Foundation C online, once again, you see all the materials that come with these programs. But I am going to go ahead and jump again ahead to our first Miles and Jack's lesson. So you'll see that the lessons are numbered and Every fifth lesson, there's a Miles and Jack's lesson. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So Miles and Jack's lessons, again, have, uh, they have a text assigned. So in these lessons, they are, these lessons are formed around these books, Miles and Jack's, a chapter from them. Again, there's skills that they're practicing. And there's always um, a spelling activity to reinforce spelling here and lots of spelling games. One of the things about foundations is you'll see games that are tailored sometimes for individual students and classroom students. If you're working one-on-one, -on -one, you could use the individual game. If you're working with a larger group, you can use the classroom versions of the games. And then there's multiple levels of spelling that you can differentiate instruction for um, in the Miles and Jack's lesson. And then there's comprehension and fluency activities laid out with how you can work through this chapter. And we also have at this point, a composition activity. So here we begin um, even more composition or writing of the students uh, for the student building on their skills. But let me give you a peek of what Miles and Jacks looks like. Whoops, I had opened this earlier. That's the cover for the first of the chapter books and cover page. But these are chapter books, so I'm scrolling down. So they have a table of contents. 
It's like uh, Little Bear, or Frog and Toad, where there are now an early chapter book. And in this first lesson, they're reading the first chapter, chapter one, Miles and Jack. And I'll give you a little look. So it says, this is Miles. Miles has a pal named Jax. Jax has a lot to learn, but Miles can teach Jax a lot. So again, these, uh, Miles shows Jax how to make pancakes. Foundation C, students learn how to read multi-syllable words for the first time. And again, they're taught through direct instruction at first, and then they begin to show up in the readers. Everything in these sentences, again, is completely decodable. The students will be able to explain to you why and how they're spelled that way, because we've taught all of those phonograms. We've taught the silent final E in miles. We've taught them what they need to decode these words. <clears throat> now I'm going to hop ahead to lesson 113 to show you just a little later in Foundation C, uh, what a Foundation C lessons look like as they progress. Here you'll see that this has a reader. Um, Foundation C, in addition to Miles and Jack, has a set of readers um, that are nonfiction. So in Foundation B, students are reading fiction. In Foundation C, they're reading an early chapter book in fiction, and they're, now they're starting to learn how to read for content. And the um, the comprehension activities in Foundation C are very intentional to teach students to read uh, nonfiction and how to read a nonfiction text, because there's some unique things about you non nonfiction texts too. Again, we list out the skills that we're targeting on these lessons. And um, you'll begin to notice that we start to have some grammar activities as well. They're learning a little bit about past tense. Um, there's systematic phonics again. Here they're learning when Y says the long sound E. So they're learning about words like baby and they're learning how it's different from cry or sandy and fly. So this lesson teaches you how to teach that concept. It's scripted again, so you can teach it um, step by step. There'll be a practice for reading those sort of words ending in Y and I'll show you the workbook. And again, spelling analysis. And you'll notice the words are getting a little bigger here. They're starting to be able to read and spell multi-syllable words. Down here, it teaches, it shows you the markings and how the students will analyze these sounds. And it shows you the hints. These are tips um, for the teacher to understand why they're read and spelled that way. Again, we support teachers with teacher tips and scripting when we think there might need teachers might need that extra support. And then there's a comprehension and fluency activity. You'll notice the lessons and foundations see get longer and that's appropriate as the students become more proficient with reading. We want their skills to have more practice um, to be able to utilize those skills by reading. I'll show you a copy of the workbook. In foundation C, there's only one workbook style. Uh, when students do handwriting practice, we ask them to translate from um, book face fonts into the handwriting style that they've been taught. So this is an intentional skill. So you only have one option for C workbooks. And here's an example of an activity uh, using past tense. There are again, practice reading these words uh, that end in Y and there's a game in the teacher's guide to practice those. And there's uh, samples of how, or ideas of how you can save um, save the words too for future lessons. There'll be a dictation activity in this lesson and I think we're good. Now, I wanna show you the reader. Um, again, spelling analysis, by the way, is all on video and I'll just scrub ahead here and you'll see I'm, I'm talking through why, are, why is each word read and spelled this way? So that's all there for your support and once again, free. Here's an example of the reader um, at this level. So this reader is called Halong Bay. We have multicultural readers. Um, Kimber Iverson, the author of our readers and Miles and Jacks has done just a phenomenal job. And, and again, these are controlled. The students are never going to encounter a phonetic concept that they have not been explicitly taught. At this point, um, they're reading things like Halong Bay is a large area on the edge of the sea. It has lots of enormous rocks that come out of the water. So, 
they are, will be able to sound out enormous. They will know how to read edge. This is decodable, which is amazing and really exciting. And the supporting comprehension activities will help them to be able to understand these better. Um, in a later lesson, I think it's lesson 114, um, there's an activity where we can poke ahead, I'm pretty sure it's here, where they actually create their own travel guide. Oh, here's another, they're reading a myth of Holon Bay, so we begin to scaffold on the information that they're learning. Um, they learn about descriptive words. So I'm just showing you the scaffolding. Um, I think it's in 115 that they actually then create a travel guide for Halong Bay as they continue to learn about it. I'm sorry, I didn't look ahead to find out where that is. But as you can picture, they're continuing to build on their information and use it and then use it for composition. Um, so Foundation C Online, you'll notice, doesn't have as many supporting videos. That is in our development in the upcoming weeks. If you buy an online course, you get content as we create it. So we will be dripping it into these courses. However, the online courses contain everything that is in the printed set, teacher's guide, um, flashcards, readers, all of those items are included. And then- Hi, we I'm Denise side. Then we get to Foundation D. And Foundation D, is for students who have completed level C. And I'm going to scroll down and show you D. And one of the important things about D to understand is at this point, students have learned all of the phonograms. They, they master, they've learned all 75 beginning in C. So in Foundation D, they have the ability to decode any word in English. And so in this level, they read a book in each lesson or a story or a chapter from an early chapter book. So I'm holding up here a Foundation C children's literature set, and I think I have a picture of it. But you'll notice these are real books, um, not published by us. And so students will be reading either one of these books or a chapter in each lesson. And the Foundation D readers come in pairs. So there are also, there's a set of fiction, classic children's literature or children's literature. And then Foundation C also has eight nonfiction readers paired with it. So for example, um, in the very first lesson, which we'll look at, they read a book called Polar Opposites, which is a story about a polar bear that lives in the Arctic and a penguin who lives in the Antarctic who meet in the middle. And in lesson two in Foundation D, the second lesson, they will then read a nonfiction book called The Arctic and the Antarctic Polar Opposite. So the idea here is that they're going to, again, scaffold their knowledge and they're going to be able to learn and build upon what they're reading for their reading comprehension skills. So let's just take a little look um, at some one of these lessons. So I'm going to show you Foundations D. And again, we're going to be adding more videos um, as we go, but this will give you a look as the at the teacher's guide and what you would get in the printed version or here in the PDF. So they're going to be reading Polar Opposites by Eric Brooks. They're going to be learning that sentences begin with capital letters. They'll be talking about antonyms. And now we begin to learn some affixes. And in this case, they're gonna learn ant because ant means opposite. The Antarctic is the opposite from the Arctic. These are their spelling analysis words. And then they're going to be identifying ways that these two characters are opposite. The, this level also has a lot more composition. We've continued to build and they're going to create a book of opposites. So let me just show you a little bit from the teacher's guide. They're still practicing their phonograms um, through games because we want to develop mastery of those sounds. Here's a grammar lesson on sentences. There's spelling analysis, once again, where they're analyzing and understanding the spelling of these words. And one of the great things about Foundation D is we put the words that might be more difficult for them to read in a book in spelling analysis before they ever read the book. 
The idea being to develop their fluency with those words so that they're not stumbling over them as they're reading the book. Again, there's teacher tips and supports for teaching those words. And once again, all of these are already on video for free and you can use them in our light course or they're integrated in. I'm gonna scroll down past spelling analysis. You'll notice there's a lot more teacher tips because we know that teachers struggle sometimes to understand these words themselves. Here they're going to read polar opposite. There's some pre-reading, showing them a globe, helping them understand the context. We also have some additional books uh, that we recommend. We're learning about the authors and how books are constructed. There's vocabulary tips and lots of comprehension conversation here. And then in vocabulary, they're learning antonyms. And notice antonym begins with ant, and just like Antarctic, ant means opposite. And they're creating a book of opposites. Now, these lessons in Foundation D are often divided across two instructional days, depending on how long your um, language arts blocks are. Many people uh, do the foundational skills on one day. I'm scrolling back up of the phonograms, the spelling rules and spelling analysis. And then they read the book on the second day as the comprehension. So that's definitely an opportunity. I'll show you the workbook. So there's a place for their spelling list. Oh, this one only has that. There's a lot more in the workbook as well. It's a big, big, thick uh, workbook for you. And a lot of comprehension activities and I'll show you a couple of those in just a few minutes. <clears throat> there are, are some interactive activities here, like phonograms where you've already built into our online courses where they can hear a phonogram. Ah, two letter ah that may not be used at the end of English words. So it's looking for this and then they type it in. So this practice is built in. And again, this is on our next development list to keep building these out. The assessments, I wanna show you this. Um, take another step up in foundation um, D. Uh, this is an example of the student workbook. But what I wanted to show you is each one also has a, an assessment that you can assess the student's fluency and comprehension skills. And there are directions in the teacher's guide about how to go about assessing fluency and comprehension. Whoops. Um, yeah, I think it's in, oh, here we go. So there, there's all the steps for the assessments. And these are every fifth lesson and we talk about um, words per minute and uh, as recommended by Nate. So these, and the oral uh, reading fluency scale. So we give you some tips on how to assess fluency. And then I'm going to jump ahead to, so lesson 145, I think, just show you a little bit more. Um, so these are just some things later. You'll see they're learning how to make a noun plural. This is the student workbook. They're practicing it, um, practicing that. They're starting to do a little bit of editing because they've been learning about editing and uppercase letters. And then this is just another example. When they read frog and toad, they also read a nonfiction reader about the difference between frogs and toads. So then they begin to compare what are some descriptive words of all frogs? What are some descriptive words of true frogs? And they began to learn some um, content activities to, or um, how to read uh, nonfiction skills. And then they use that information to identify if each of these pictures are a frog or a toad. So now they're taking this information and they're classifying images based on what they've learned. So this is just an example of how we, again, integrate in um, comprehension after the students have been taught all of the phonograms and spelling rules to read these words. So this is, uh, I think, a good tour of what foundations looks like. And I'm gonna turn off my screen sharing and open it up for questions. And I can always go back to sharing my screen if that's helpful to answer someone's question. Anybody? Don't be shy. If you want to ask it orally, you can unmute, or if you want to put it in the chat, that's fine too. Oh, here's one. Is the online version a one-time purchase? 
It's an annual subscription, so once a year. And is the goal to complete two levels in one academic year, or do you choose one level or the other for each grade range? Foundations A, kindergarten, then foundations B the next year in grade one. So uh, we tailor it based on schools um, and the settings. So as I said, the most common that we've seen is foundations A and B in kindergarten and foundation C and D in first grade. That said, we have a number of schools that use foundations A and part of B in kindergarten and the rest of B and all of C in first grade, and then they use foundations D in second grade. And so our uh, curriculum consultants though can help people. We also have a handful of pre-Ks using foundations A. Um, it's not in my mind designed for pre-K, but I understand how they're using it and I, it can be adapted for that. Um, multiple, we do not have student courses at this time for the online courses. Uh, the courses are really teacher level access. However, um, our goal is to be creating student level courses uh, within the next six to eight months. So those will be student level access. And in fact, we just hired a digital learning specialist to help us. We wanna be sure that we have the resources and we've tested on this, these on all your LMSs before we release them for wide scale adoption on the student level. So be watching for that, but we are in process of getting that going, including having someone who's in house to test them. Um, I'm wondering how essentials is different from foundations and would it be appropriate for a second grader if foundations can end in first? Uh, essentials is different in its presentation. I'm doing a, a session on essentials uh, soon with Donna. You can tell the date. 23rd. By the way, the 23rd. By the way, Essentials Online has content, video content and interactivities for the entire four volumes. So it is a massive, massive amount of content. And Essentials is unique in that it has differentiated instruction. It has um, three different levels of spelling analysis all integrated in so that you can differentiate instruction for different levels of students. And then it's presented in a more mature way so that an older student wouldn't find it babyish. All that said, we do definitely have schools who use um, essentials to follow up in second grade. Um, how can foundation A be adapted for pre-K? Great, uh, great, great question. So foundation A, you really would dwell uh, on each lesson a little longer. Um, there's a a lot of phonemic awareness activities and games. And so I would extend the lessons. I would maybe teach one lesson every two or three days as opposed to one lesson a day, playing the games again, using these extension activities. There's multi-sensory fun teacher tips on the side. I would do all of the extended activities if that makes sense in a pre-K. And many of the pre-Ks that we have um, that use this don't use the workbook as much they would then use the multi-sensory activities. They would use the whiteboard and, and say the tactile cards for teaching handwriting, but they would then save the workbook um, for kindergarten. And some of that will depend on the style of your pre-K too and how you feel about workbook pages in a pre-K setting. But there's a lot of games and activities that don't rely on the workbook as well. Any other questions or anything else you'd like to see a little bit more in depth? Another thing that may be helpful since I saw that almost all of you are teaching in schools is if you contact our uh, support um, team and I can, I'll put the address for the contact page. Um, our school consulting team also does provide free review set um, to you as well and here, let me pull up in our contact page, and then I'm gonna pull up one other resource for those of you in schools that would be really helpful to you. Someone asked, is this appropriate for students who have special needs? Yes. Yes, in fact, we have a number of schools who have adopted this for their intervention program and for their um, 
other support programs. We don't advertise it that way. It's, um, it's all of the same concepts that are taught by the International Dyslexia Association or Orton Gillingham programs. We don't advertise that way though because two thirds of students read below grade level in the United States. And we know from the science of reading that all students benefit from systematic instruction. And so we are encouraging schools to teach this way in their mainstream classrooms. And then students who need more support should get pulled out and taught the same concepts mm -hmm. with more reinforcement. Unfortunately, what often happens is the students get pulled out and then they get taught different sounds to the phonograms, maybe more sounds than they're taught in their mainstream classrooms. And that's really confusing for students. So, um, so that's our thought on that. To what degree does foundations expect students to have a strong oral language base? Um, we have found students uh, that this benefits students without a strong oral language base. However, you are still going to need to work on their vocabulary, right? They're still going to need to be working on the meanings of words. But some of our um, piloting showed phenomenal advancement in students with phonemic awareness skills. And on the Dibbles exam or on the Dibbles test, by the end of um, kindergarten, they were almost the entire uh, school was at over the 90th percentile, which was shocking to us, even their students uh, who were bilingual. And so we were really excited to see their growth in scores. Uh, because it's systematic instruction again and now they're learning the sounds and then you can reference the sounds when they're saying words or you know struggling so um have you seen your program work logistically in a grades one and two classroom could i run a and b for the grade ones and b and c for the grade twos you could um another option is to teach foundations a really uh pretty quickly for everyone um, because a lot of times they know, say, 50% of what's in A already based on kindergarten instruction from other programs. So being able to, one option would be to teach A to everyone very quickly and then teach B and C to a combined first grade and second grade classroom that year. So I think that's a very reasonable goal is to teach A, B, and C in that setting um, to two grades at once. And again, um, I wouldn't feel bad about the second graders who are maybe getting a few weeks of A because they're not going to know that Y says yes, if, I, E. Another thing you could do is you could switch the whole class to cursive and so that they're all learning cursive at the same time, or you can extend it in ways so that they're also getting some challenge. Um, should you do essentials after completing foundations? It is an option. Um, and one that you could uh, work again with school support based on your exact setting, if that's the best option for your school. Um, if my school has never used this before in my grade two, three class began using this at the foundation year D level or essentials level, would they still get all of the instruction they missed out in in the first two levels of A and B? So in second grade, um, so if you're adopting this program new, the easiest thing to do is uh, to just start in kindergarten in each year at a grade. If you're not doing that, again, our consulting team will work with you to decide if, you're found, if your first grade students need A, B, and C that year, or if they are ready based on what you've previously taught to start in just B and C. And then in second grade, we have had schools do B, C, and D in an adoption year as well. So, Again, our curriculum consulting team is really, really good at helping you determine what have you been teaching in the past and how might placement and adoption in that transition look like for you. Um, as for essentials, essentials starts at the beginning. You don't have to have done foundations to do essentials. It teaches all of the phonograms and all the spelling rules right from the beginning. And so yes, third grade classes start in essentials all of the time. That's very, very common. And I'm excited that you're full of questions. It helps me to feel engaged to my screen. So please do not apologize. <laughs> um, thinking of essentials for my older students, does it follow the same scope and sequence so I could use some of the foundation's readers with them for additional practice? Great question. 
in our help center, there is an article that tracks the foundation's readers with essentials as well. And essentials also has a reader. Let me see if I can find you the article quickly. I don't know if I will be able to, but I will try. All right. Um, I'm just skimming really quick if this is it. Um, again, my custo the customer school support could find you that article really quickly. And then if you are looking at a school purchase, let me do one other thing here to give to you um, that I think would be helpful to everyone who's looking at a school. Um, I'm going to put in the chat box uh, something that we call our school quote builder um, because someone's asking about discounts. And at this uh, website, you can answer some questions about your grades and adoptions, and you can change all your information, but it will give you the discounts because there are discounts based on bulk purchasing and what you're purchasing and all of that. And then you can play around with it and see, you know, how many of things you need to buy to keep the discount, and et cetera. So that is there for you to play with. Um, help you understand that part. Uh, I'm still doing conversations with high school, university students and adults. This is, oh, thank you. I'm glad that this is helpful. And I think you would find the essentials um, program uh, really, really helpful. So I'm excited to show that to you. Um, you can also find it on our e-learning site. By the way, the first five lessons of Foundations A and B are available for free on the e-learning site. You'll see that if you go there. And Essentials, the first uh, unit is available for free. So uh, if you're, those of you who are asking about Essentials, you can see it in, um, in detail there. Any other questions or comments tonight? I think we're good. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I feel so honored to be able to share this with you. And once again, please let us know if you have questions. We would love to help out. <laughs> Did you see this last one? My daughter recognized your voice from doing spelling analysis this year. <laughs> Lori, say hello to her for me. <laughs> that is so cool. All right, very good. All right, thanks, Denise, so much. Yeah. We'll see you on the 23rd. All right. I'll see you on the 23rd. All right. Have a All good, right. good month. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.